Good morning, everybody. Commonwealth, as you know, is focused on monitoring and mitigating the coronavirus outbreak, and we are preparing for more confirmed cases to occur. Our state and local health officials are monitoring this issue around the clock and working hard to provide additional resources and support to our residents. I know the closures and disruptions are unsettling, but I actually think seeing all of these changes means people are coming together to push back on this disease. We're all going to miss watching the Celtics and the Bruins for a while, but what that means, I think, is that people are acting not in their own self-interest, but acting to help one another. And one more thing, there is no shortage of food or dry goods at our stores. Some shelves in some stores have been bare. We've all seen the pictures, but guess what? They weren't bare the next morning. I ask everyone to please use their heads, get a few extra items when you go out. Perfectly appropriate. But fill in your basement with two years worth of canned soup just means your neighbor will have to go without. For responsible planning advice, you can always visit mass.gov slash no plan prepare. I want to take a minute to go over what the science tells us once again about this disease. For the vast majority of people, approximately 80% of the population, COVID-19 would mostly feel like the flu. The infection would not lead to hospitalization and your body would fight the infection and recover. But the reason we're taking this so seriously is because it is incredibly contagious, much more contagious than the flu, and it is especially dangerous for people with certain pre-existing conditions and for senior citizens. Our administration is working with the federal government to analyze the facts, use the guidance of the World Health Organization, our public health officials, the CDC, and our world-class hospitals. We anticipate there will be more cases of COVID-19 but we also know if everyone plays their part in slowing the spread, our healthcare system can be better positioned to care for the people who need it. Wash your hands, avoid crowds, cover your cough, and pay attention to the medical guidance. That is how we push back on this disease and make sure that the number of people who contract it remains manageable. But we truly are all in this together, and if we act now to practice good hygiene, keep sur surfaces clean, engage in social distancing, and do the common sense things that we've all been talking about for the last few weeks, we can make a difference. Now, Lieutenant Governor Polito and I are joined here today by the entire cabinet because responding to this disease is gonna involve just about every corner of state government. We're also gonna to continue to meet the needs of our residents and of course, continue to operate state government. But I do want you to know that starting now, we're standing up a coronavirus command center. It will be headed up on a full-time basis by HHS Secretary Mary Lou Sutters. This team of experts will focus solely on pushing back against this disease and on expanding testing capacity and distribution and quickly responding to the needs of our communities. Expert teams will work to expand lab capacity for testing, plan quarantine operations, coordinate communication and guidance across government, respond to the needs of our local boards of health, monitor supply chains, and identify surge capacity in our healthcare network. The command center will be made up of representatives from the Department of Public Health, the Emergency Management Center, Department of Labor, Transportation, the MBTA, Massport, multiple education agencies, and our public safety agencies. The command center will have complete authority and discretion to tap whatever state funds are necessary. And this includes, of course, the $15 million that was recently appropriated by the legislature specifically to battle COVID-19. The command center will be the Commonwealth's single point of strategic decision-making and coordination for the COVID-19 response across state government. By convening decision-makers from these facets of state government, our administration will be able to continue to ramp up our dedicated response to this developing and evolving situation. We believe this is a primary and important step in our planning and preparedness and will be a strong complement to the work that's been underway for weeks across state government to keep people safe and healthy. Setting up this dedicated team will also ensure that state government can continue to run on a reasonably uninterrupted basis to meet the needs of those who rely on us every single day. 
And I know I speak for the cabinet when I say the most days, the hard work of so many state and local workers goes unnoticed. And it's in times like these when we must pull together that the sacrifice and dedication of all of our state and local workers is on full display. One final note, I want to remind everyone that in addition to the role we all have to play in pushing back against the virus, there are other things we can do. Call your neighbors, your friends, and your family members. A friendly check-in can go a long way right now in helping somebody through their day. As a reminder, you can always visit mass.gov slash COVID-19 or call 211 for the latest information and visit mass.gov slash no plan and prepare for helpful advice on planning for emergencies. With that said, I want to turn the podium over to Secretary Sutters, who will talk a bit about the command center and some other updates. Good morning. Thank you, Governor, Lieutenant Governor, and my colleagues in the Cabinet. As you heard from the Governor, I will be leading um, the Governor's Coronavirus Command Center. I will be handing over my day-to-day -day responsibilities to Dan Sai, my Assistant Secretary at Health and Human Services, and, our, and who is also our Medicaid Director. I leave them in very capable hands so that I can devote full time to this responsibility. Coming out of the gates, our priorities will include expanding the capacity and distribution of testing, the allocation of personal protective equipment, surge hospital crisis capacity, scenario modeling, and contingency planning and supply chain vulnerabilities. And the work actually started over this weekend. As we transition, I want to speak for a few minutes about testing, because I know that's on everyone's mind. As we transition into community mitigation, several important changes were made to the Department of Public Health clinical testing protocols to speed up and increase testing at our state lab. The first change is that clinicians no longer need to receive testing approval from the state lab prior to submitting specimens for patients that meet particular criteria. They include symptomatic healthcare workers and emergency medical services personnel who have worked while, while symptomatic. Hospitalized patients suspected of having COVID-19 infection. Individuals who have had close contact with someone with confirmed COVID-19 while symptomatic who were present in congregate settings clusters of acute respiratory illness in a congregate setting, household members with close contact with someone confirmed with COVID-19 and symptomatic, and those with symptoms linked to recent travel to high-risk countries. The second change is that clinicians can submit a single swab rather than the previous two swabs. That will speed up the testing capability at our state lab. As clinicians change their practice and follow the new guidances, this change will allow us to test more individuals in a day. As the governor stated on Thursday, the Department of Public Health continues to request and receive new test kits, but we also know we need more labs to come online. Thursday, we received news that two commercial labs, LabCorp and Quest Diagnostics, received federal approval for testing. And this morning we heard a third commercial lab is coming, has received federal FDA approval. Clinicians will be able to send specimens directly to the labs and all results will be communicated to the state lab when completed. Remember, commercial labs do not use the CDC test kits. They have their own tests approved by the FDA. As we have repeatedly said, it is critical that more labs be approved by the federal government and come online in Massachusetts, and we continue to urge the FDA and CDC to help us expand our testing capacity so that we can test more residents across the Commonwealth. Beginning next week, as I have stated, the Department of Public Health will formally post testing data about how many individuals we have tested online every Wednesday at noontime. This coincides with our weekly updates on self-quarantine monitoring data. As of this Friday, the lab has tested 
475 patients. I'd also like to just mention a few changes we have made in MassHealth. And as you all know, MassHealth is the public insurance program for about 1.8 million people in our state. Yesterday, under my direction, MassHealth issued new guidance that includes the expansion of telehealth and telephonic coverage. Physicians and clinicians can call their patients for care and we will cover the cost. This is unprecedented. Usually telehealth requires video conferencing. This is telephone. We are allowing 90-day prescriptions and early refills for everyone on mass health coverage. We, will ex we are expanding hospital presumptive eligibility for anyone suspected by a provider for COVID-19. If they, if they meet verbally the mass health income standard, they will be automatically enrolled in mass health and we will do the paperwork after the fact. We have relaxed our contractual care coordination requirements and directed providers who have face-to-face -face activities, such as assessment of clinical need and member engagement, that they can do that work telephonically instead of in person. As you know, yesterday we announced 211 was officially up and running in English, Spanish, and available in many other languages to help answer the public's questions about COVID-19. As of this morning, first of all, thank you for getting the word out. As of this morning, 760 calls have been answered with a marked increase in the hour after yesterday's press conference. Call topics are wide ranging, but primarily focus on testing, access to supplies like hand sanitizer and workplace questions. So with that, I will turn it back over to the governor. And thank you for the confidence, governor.